right, uh, Romans chapter 8, please, Romans chapter 8. I uh, make no excuses for uh, what I preach, but sometimes I feel like, Lord, really? I, I feel like I've spent a lot of time in certain general areas, and I'd like to explore the Bible a little bit, but uh, I'm not the boss of the church. The Lord is. And uh, the Holy Spirit of God dwells in me like it does every other believer. And God knows what this church needs. And I hope um, you'll listen to this message this morning. One that you, uh, along the lines that you've probably heard a couple of times. You've heard referenced at funerals and when bad things happen and all these different things. And I, I hope to shed some light this morning. And maybe we can turn uh, turn a page or turn up the heat in our life, and uh, kind of get with, get with the program. I'll read one verse. <clears throat> uh, this is probably one of my most favorite chapters uh, of, of uh, written of Paul. Uh, verse 31 through 39 is just kind of like a peacock for a Christian, like what can stop a Christian? Uh, I kind of, that juices me up. But I want to look at verse 28. Look at verse 28. The Bible says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I'll read it one more time. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Heavenly Father, help the message this morning. Help the gentlemen as they sing. Uh, Lord, they've trained, they've practiced. Uh, help them to do well. I know that they're singing for you. Um, and... Uh, Lord, we love the message about what they're about getting ready to sing. I help the message of the uh, sermon this morning also. Primary church, the folks working in the nursery, uh, folks that will be baptized this morning. Uh, Lord, be in it all. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys sang for the Lord and you disappointed him. <laughs> uh, hey, hey. Sarcasm is my love language. If you don't know that by now, then go love somebody else. Hey, you're good. Don't lie to them. No, listen, listen, truly. Uh, there's some people that used to sing in the choir, man. Listen, I, you laugh, but I'm not kidding. Wolves howling at the moon were all more on tune. However, wolves howling at the moon don't sing about the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And last I checked, we were fearfully and wonderfully made. And if God didn't give you a voice that sings on tune, then God's the one that gave you that voice. And you might as well just be content with it Amen. and love it and say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, and um, so do your best. And hang the rest, and anybody wants to laugh at you or poke fun at you, be like, I'm better than you. Um, don't worry, those that exalt themselves, God will bring them down. So, Romans 8, 28. Do you fall under the umbrella of this promise? You say, well, what are you saying, Brother Jackson? I thought that was for everybody. It's not. I have, I've used this before to comfort people at funerals and things happen. Uh, uh, the truth is, is uh, I hope to give you a truth that maybe kind of uh, peel back a layer. You see, the truth is in the Bible, man, I'm growing up in church. Right? I grew up with a Bible in my hand. I still have, like, I think my first or second Bible that I got on. Um, it was like, a, I think, Christmas morning, and we were on Joliet Street in um, uh, Hobart, Indiana. I got a sled. I got a, bi I got a Bible. I got some other things. still have that Bible um, uh, amongst another one I got from Steve Angel um, in uh, Sunday school class. Um, but, um, uh, so I, I grew up around the Bible, I had the Bible, knew the Bible, but I do not profess to know all of it. I mean, the Bible is like, um, best way to describe it is like, you can take one verse and that verse is like an onion layer after layer after layer of truth. Um, and Romans eight twenty eight. I hope, I hope that this will be a blessing to you this morning. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. Now, the Bible, excuse me, <clears throat> the Bible says in Psalm, nine, uh, Psalm chapter 9 that the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. That includes America. There are more churches in America than any other place on earth. America has forgotten God. 
America has forgotten God, and everybody knows it. America hates God. You can see it. America hates Jesus. You can see it. And America hates the Word of God. They call you Bible thumpers. They call you anything and everything but your name. College campuses. Uh, they're places of immorality and sin and filth and infidelity. Uh, I would not send my kid to a... Uh, listen, I said it last week. I'll say it again this week. I don't want my kids fighting, fighting for this country anymore because it is not what it was worth fighting for. Not with a gun in their hand. Not with putting on a, a, on a, on a uniform and going saying yes, sir, to a guy who uses God's name in vain. The best way for a born-again Christian who loves their country to fight for their country is to get on their knees every single day and beg God who oversees this country to do something about it. You say, well, what more can I do? You can open up your Bible and preach. You say, well, I'm not a preacher. The word preach means to proclaim. That's all it means. That's all it means, to proclaim truth. Proclaim truth. Wherever you go, whatever you do, proclaim truth. And then secondly, tell people about Jesus. Tell people about Jesus. The wicked shall be turned into hell. America can be turned into hell because that nation has forgotten God. Well, let's try to get the nation to remember God. Best way to do that, Christian, is not by going and swearing allegiance to a POTUS who's not worth giving your allegiance to. College campuses, uh, public schools, uh, places of business now, they've become filthy. The Bible says righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. So we live under reproach this morning. Um, but I have good news. See, folks, you can come to church, you're like, ah, Brother Jackson, negativity, we don't, we get that from Fox and CNN and everybody else. We don't need negative. We need God loves us. God, God wants us. God enjoys us. God, he, and he does and he wants to. But we've got to draw nigh to God so he can draw nigh to us. You've got to do your part so God can do his part. You'll find a lot of ifs you will, if you wills, I wills in the Bible. God says, if you will, I will. If you will, I will. Now, there are some promises that God put in there regardless. Like, I'll never leave you, never forsake you kind of thing. Uh, he'll ne he knows who belong to him. He says he's written you in the palm of his hand. He's carved you into his shoulder. He's written your name in the Lamb's book of life. He's removed your sin as far as the east is from the west. He's buried it in the deepest sea. It's, yes, that's good enough for me. My sins are gone eternally. Praise God, praise God, I'm on my way to heaven. I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about my eternal security. Because when I got born again, there was a spiritual DNA change. When you're born into somebody, I led a lady to the Lord uh, the other week on Chestnut over here. Her name was Joy. Uh, um, and um, uh, going soul went in, knocked on her door. And I, and, and I love the book of John. I've been in the book of John 94 times, 98 times. It says, believe, believe, believe. And I've been using the book of John to go soul winning. And I led her to the Lord. And I said, you know what John 3.16 says? She said, oh, yeah, uh, for God so loved the world. And she quoted it. I said, yeah, but did you know where that conversation stemmed from? Or what, what was before that? She said, no. I said, there's a conversation with a, a Pharisee who was a religious man named Nicodemus. And I said, Nicodemus asked Jesus, Jesus, how can a man get, you know, get eternal life? And Jesus said, you must be born again. And this old, wise, religious man said to Jesus, Jesus, how can an old man when he's born, how can a man when he's old go into his mother's womb again and be born? And Jesus said, nope, that which is born of, the spirit, or of water is water, flesh is flesh, but that which is born of spirit is spirit. So when you get saved, there's a DNA change. That does not change. That does not change. Um, but my relationship, or excuse me, my fellowship with the Lord changes. I want to fall into compliance and accordance with what God says makes him happy, gives glory to Jesus, and gets me all the rewards possible. I mean, right? Yeah. Right? I mean, I don't want to be so independent, fundamental, Bible-believing, hellfire and brimstone Baptist that I don't believe in the blessings from the Lord. Amen. Because there is a sect of religion in America today that is called prosperity gospel, that if you get saved, and you're really truly saved, then you'll have the house on Hollywood Hills and you'll drive a Maserati and you know wear $10,000 suits and all that, which that's a bone-faced lie, and it's perverting the gospel. You see, the gospel is, uh, I will follow Jesus regardless. It's a regardless love. He had a regardless love for me. I want to have a regardless love for him. So when I gave my vows to my wife and I said in sicknesses and health and poverty and wealth, I gave that to Jesus Christ as well. I said, Jesus, Jesus, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to serve you in sickness and in health. Jesus said, oh, yeah, we're going to find out. In poverty and in wealth. Oh, yeah, we're going to find out. 
in poverty and in wealth? Uh, we're going to find out. You will be tested. I told something in my Sunday school class. I said, um, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not a spiritual giant. I don't have this and this and this. But some months ago, I told, I don't know who I was talking to out in the parking lot. I said, you know, I've got, one thing I have is, man, I've got solid faith. <laughs> God said, oh, you do. You do? Well, let's find out if you do. And now not only did I understand that I didn't have solid faith, I had misplaced faith. You said, what are you talking about, Jackson? I was reliant on the growth of Jake Jackson's faith. So therefore, I was relying on my faith. And I was not relying on who my faith is. My faith is Jesus. It's Jesus. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not on thine own understanding. All thy ways acknowledge him. I was acknowledging my faith. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. So when I came to a place of saying, I've got strong faith, I thought I did. It wasn't as strong as I thought because it was misplaced. Now, if I want all these blessings, if I want to fall under the umbrella of Romans 8, 28, there's two things that I've got to fall into compliance with. Even in this nation that we live in, here's the good news. The wonderful news, the good news is, uh, uh, is for those of us who believe the word of God and we believe it with our heart. Now, I believe that um, uh, for the Christian, the great, um, uh, this is, a, I guess, an archaic word now, but a smorgasbord, uh, a buffet table. Uh, uh, this is the buffet table Bible verses. One of the greatest Bible verses in Ro is Romans 8, 28. You've got to figure out um, what it's all about. Who said it? Why they said it? And who's he saying it to? Um, uh, we used to answer the phone at our house. Uh, uh, the phone would ring back when phones were attached to the wall. We'd go into the kitchen, and we'd pick up the phone. We'd say, Jackson Residence, who's calling, please? Jackson Residence, who's calling, please? I have a book by uh, Lester Roloff, and he would say his daddy would answer the phone and say, uh, 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 who's doing the talking? Hello? Who's doing the talking? Where is Lester Roloff? There he is right there, Brother Lester Roloff, um, uh, next to Curtis Hudson, R.G. Lee there on the wall. He said, uh, hello, who's doing the talking? Folks, when you read the Bible, you got to find out who's doing the talking. you got to find out who's doing the talking, what's, what, what's, what's going on, what's going on. And I found out um, when uh, I read the Bible, it's the Holy Spirit of God doing the talking. So I want you to listen to me just for a few minutes. Paul said, and we know. I love that. There's some very simple words in the Bible that I just love. The word all in the Bible, all. He's forgiven all my sin, all of it, all. Man, I love that. And we know, I love that. And we know, we don't think, we don't hope, but we know all things work together for good. Man, I love that. We know, that's a confidence. We know, kind of makes you a, a bold. It's a certainty, it's permanent. He didn't say, I love, I love this. I love reading what the Bible says and then filling in, it helps people sink in to understand what it doesn't say. He doesn't say we think. He didn't say we presume or we imagine or we wish. He said we know and we know. And I want to know what he knows. I want to know what Paul knows. Uh, there was a, a lot of people living in the world, or there are a lot of people living in the world today who think they do know. Scientists and astronomers and uh, uh, politicians and uh, um, uh, intellectuals who think they know. I read an article last night about um, how some guy found a fossil 500 million years old. No, you didn't. You found a fossil, but it wasn't 500 million years old. I'm not denying you found a fossil, but I am denying you're off a few years because I believe the Bible. And people say that you're a, a, a doofus if you believe the Bible. Well, I got one for you, uh, 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 um, unbeliever. Some man came on uh, social media and he said, oh, you're not supposed to call a man fool. I said, no, you're not supposed to call your brother a fool. Fool. He, and he said, take this down and redo it. I said, delete. You deleted his comment? Yep, because I'm an ad man and I can. Put something stupid on our Facebook page, I'll delete you. I'm not, I'm not going to sit there and argue with doofuses. The Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. I'm going to let God be true. I don't care. Listen, I don't care what kind of book people. You can't trust the Bible. It was written by men. Let me pull out my textbook written by men. You can't test those. You can't trust those people. 
Uh, no, you can trust God. God will never let you down. And Paul said, I know, I know, I know. There's a lot of people in the world today who think they do know. But folks, I'll tell you right now, that's not enough for me. I don't care if you put all the um, high-ranking uh, 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 universities together, Ivy League and colleges and universities, and put all the intellectuals together and combine their IQ, it's still not enough for me. It's not enough for me. We say, you're high maintenance. No, I have high expectations because this is my eternal soul we're talking about here. And Paul said, I know, I know. The greatest preacher who ever lived, I believe, outside of Jesus is Paul. And he said, I know, I know whom I have believed. I love this scripture. I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Then he said in Romans 8, 28, and we know all things work together. And we know all things. Now, folks, all things is a lot of things, isn't it? All things is a lot of things. There's a lot of things. There's a whole heap of things going on in this world. And he said that we know all things work together for good. Now, we might, we might as well admit um, that life is a series of events, right? That's a series of uh, things, happenings, experiences, day-by-day -day steps. And yet Paul says, um, uh, uh, by the Holy Spirit, and we know all things work together for good to them that love God. Now, one of the considerations in this message is, is you have to ask yourself, do you love God? I don't think there's a person in this room who says they would hate God. But do we love God? Now, the Bible says, for God so loved that he gave. What are we doing to show, or I should say, what are we giving? Are we giving time, talent, treasure, effort, uh, diligence? Are we, are we giving anything? to show that God that we love him. Jesus said, if ye love me, keep my commandments. And they said, oh man, the commandments. I, we can't. And he said, these two commandments, love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. So um, uh, 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 we have to ask ourselves, do we really love God? I'm not talking about um, loving the church, even though Christ died for the church, but I'm talking about your particular church. There's somebody um, who's venturing to do something and... Uh, the devil, it's either the devil trying to tempt me to be critical or Jesus testing me to be positive. I'm not sure which one, so I'm trying to do right. Uh, somebody's try venturing to do something, and I'm disagreeing with what they're doing. They should have taken the steps that I think they should have taken, and they're not doing it, even though they're trying to do something good, um, but it's, it's misguided. Uh, and the opportunity to be critical keeps coming up. God bless him. I wish him the best. I hope he succeeds. I hope he does well. For me to sit there and hope somebody fails is not right, especially if they're trying to do something right. Um, if it, God's will to open their eyes and change what they're doing, then so be it. But, but uh, 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 to love God doesn't mean loving my church or loving be just being a Baptist there's, folks, there's no need in wasting your time on loving those things because those things are passing by. I don't know if Baptists know this, but some Catholics are saved and they're going to be in heaven. Do you know some Lutherans have been saved? Presbyterians have been saved. There's some people, um, the Bible teaches specifically that there were Pharisees who were believers but did not make it openly known because they were afraid of the persecution that they would face. So don't be surprised when you get to heaven and find out you were Catholic? How'd you get to heaven? Oh, you know that believing thing in the Bible? Yeah, I did that. <laughs> Not all Catholics go to hell. They do if they believe in the Catholic uh, teachings of, 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 of um, uh, purgatory and heaven and hell and lighting candles and praying for souls to get in that. That ain't legit. You ain't gonna find that in scripture. Uh, but just because you're a Baptist doesn't get, punch your ticket into heaven. Well, Lord, I, I was a part of a Baptist church. He's going to say, oh, please show me in the Bible where it says join the Baptist church to go to heaven. Last I checked, the Ethiopian eunuch wasn't an independent, fundamental, Bible-believing, hellfire, damnation, fire-breathing, chandler-shaking, paint-peeling Baptist. He was just an Ethiopian eunuch who said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. There's water right there. What hinders me to be baptized? And, John, and Philip said to him, if you believe in all your heart, he said, I believe in all my heart. I've done that with people I go out soul with or um, uh, uh, lead to the Lord. And I say, if you believe that, shake my hand. If you really meant that, shake my hand. They'll say, I believe it. I meant it with all my heart. Shake my hand. They'll shake my hand. They believed it. 
They believed it. So I'm not talking about just loving this or loving that, loving your church or loving your denomination, but I'm talking about a love for God, a love for God. Because if we love things that we ought not give our love to or attach to, those things ought not be the object of our love. You'll wind up discouraged. If you love the church over God, you're going to end up discouraged. If you love the independent fundamental Baptist heritage over God, you're going to be discouraged. Because last I checked, churches are full of people and people fail. If you put your love into anything besides God, you'll end up discouraged. God doesn't want us to be discouraged. The Bible says that we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. Now, do you love him? Now, when you get through analyzing Romans 8, 28, which we're doing right now, here's some of the things that you're going to see. You're going to see, number one, in the first place, he said, we know, and we know all things. And we know that they work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. This means the people in the will of God who have the purpose of God in their life. Now, I might as well just go ahead and say it. And it's not, I don't always like saying things like this, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it. Um, uh, because this is the truth. This verse does not apply to just the preacher or just the average uh, churchgoer. And um, there's no need to try to make Romans 8.28 work in the average life because it won't work. If you say, oh, this, well, I don't jump ahead of myself here. It won't work just for anybody. It, it can apply to anyone, but it doesn't work for everyone. Please understand that. There has to be, first of all, a regeneration, no condemnation. The Bible says that there is, ne- there is therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Uh, the, whole, the whole chapter uh, 8 of Romans teaches uh, regeneration, no condemnation, justification, sanctification. Um, uh, 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 there has to be an impossible, sep- or impassable, impossible separation, and there has to be certain glorific- glorification. You're like, Brother Jackson, what are all those things? Those are all messages for another day. Uh, but for the sake of my message, I'm building my foundation here. Those are all in chapter 8. Uh, of this book of Romans. But I want you to notice this one verse. Uh, he said we have some limit, limitations after we're regenerated. Limitations. Re, regenerated comes from the word regened. That DNA I was speaking of earlier, that's that re dna You've been regened, adopted into the family of God. He cannot deny his own. I told uh, Lincoln, I was telling my, Lincoln's the third? Yeah, our, our third oldest boy, Lincoln, um, about being in God's family. Uh, being a part of God's family. You know, he can grow up and change his name. He can, I don't want to be a Jackson. I want to be a Smith uh, and change his last name and um, do whatever he wants. But did you know his DNA cannot change? Now, you, you go ahead and get regened. You go ahead and ask Jesus Christ to be your Savior. You get born again. You get born again. Say, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you kind of fade from that life. You might have changed your name or changed your look, but you can't change your DNA. He will claim his own. Um, uh, uh, So we we have some limitations after we've been regenerated. He doesn't say that we become perfect. A lot of people think, well, if you're a born again Christian, you don't sin anymore. Huh? Yes, I do. I know all kinds of people are saved and they sin. Uh, I know the, the I'm I am chief I am the chief sinner. Paul said, uh, uh, "I have taken over that title. Uh, I am the chief sinner." But after we've been regened, there's some limitations because we're not perfect as soon as we get saved. But what happens is is we get on the path that leads to that direction of being like Christ. He said in verse 27. He said, uh, "He that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints." according to the will of God. Now, the Holy Spirit always prays in the will of God. He never prays against the will of God. John 15, 7 tells us, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. And Romans eight twenty eight is a passage that works for the will of God's people and his purpose, and his purpose of God's people, and the people who love God. So it says, I love God. Okay, do you love? That's great. I'm glad that you love God. If you love God, are you living out his purpose in your life? Are you living and existing today for the purpose of letting God do something in your life? If you say, yes, that is my sole being of being alive. Um, I don't know exactly that I'm doing it every day. I'm trying. I get up every day and I'm like, God, what do you want me to do? I, I know that I'm supposed to be a good husband, a good father, a good employee. I'm supposed to be a good citizen. I'm supposed to do all these things. And that's the elementary stuff. I'm trying. I'm trying. But God, what's the big picture? 
God will not reveal the unknown if you're not obedient in the known. You see, you got to be doing the known to God for God to pull back that curtain and let you know the unknown. I did not know God wanted me to be a pastor when I was 15 and 16 and 17. Maybe he didn't. Maybe God, I don't know if he did or not, but I knew that God knew this was one of the outcomes. And um, uh, I, I talked to someone, I said, like, I don't know how it all works. I think God sees every possible outcome, and God is prepared for every possible outcome. Uh, and I said, I, it's not that God wanted me to be a businessman, and I threw it away, and, and somebody was supposed to be a pastor, and they threw it away, so it kind of chips fell to me. I know what happened. My dad got sick, and my dad's my hero, and my dad knows, or God knows that I wouldn't have preached because I love God. He knew that I would have preached because I love my dad. And my dad stayed sick. My dad stayed sick and stayed sick and, sa and stayed sick. And you know who else was sick? Jake Jackson was sick. He was heart sick. Because Jake Jackson didn't want to be a preacher. A preacher? I don't want to do that. That's like study and reading and oh, people. I got to go talk to I don't want to do any of that. But then there was a heart that was healed. Uh, sometime in October of 2000, I don't know, 20 or something. Uh, was it 20, 18, 19, I think 19, October of 19, just outside of Decatur, it was raining, y'all have heard the story, I was struggling, fighting with the Holy Spirit of God, because I was super convicted, um, and God was like, just, just yield, and I'm like, I don't want to yield, so I got out of the semi-truck, and, and knelt down in front of the car, or in front of the truck, it was about 4 a.m., and I thought, man, I was boo-hooing. No, God, I, I'm afraid to be a preacher. I don't want to fail. It's a big responsibility. I, I don't know that I'm the man. I can't do it. And all I heard, and I don't mean some voice in my ear, but it was, a, I think the Spirit of God said it to me. He, what he said to Paul, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. That's it. My grace is sufficient for you. Now get back in the truck and go do what you got to do and settle it in your heart. And from that day forward, I settled it in my heart. And I not only... Loved God, but I now became part of the purpose. See, there's somebody, might be somebody in this room who's running from the purpose. You say, yeah, I love God. Well, okay, then this Romans 8, 28 thing's not gonna, you're not gonna get under that umbrella. You know who's the most dry? The person who's in the center of the umbrella. You're getting wet if you're, oh, I love God, but I'm not in his purpose. Well, you show God that you love God by giving yourself to his purpose. What's God's purpose? Well, those very, um, and I don't mean menial, but those, those tasks that I said ahead of time are responsibilities of life. Him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Romans 8, 28 is a passage that works for the will of God, God's people and, and the purpose of God's people and the people who love God. So if we are in love with the world and the things of the world and the junk that's in the world, then don't expect Romans 8, 28 to work for you. The Bible says you cannot love God and mammon. You cannot serve God and Satan. You're going to love one and hate the other. One's going to become a burden to you. One's going to become, and it's usually if we're feeding the flesh, God will become the burden. God will become the burden. We cannot love God and love the world because they are at war with each other. They are enmity against each other. Now, I... I um, I know that we, we, we use this sort of, this verse as sort of a, a hiding place, um, and we use it kind of for everything else because somebody gets killed or somebody dies a little too early, and they say, well, Romans 8, 28. Well, that's not necessarily true. Does it soothe? Is it a salve, and it kind of makes you feel better? Yeah, but folks, if you dilute a, 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 a truth with a lie, it's a lie. The, Bible, the Bible's got clear teachings on things, and we, it, it, is, it is paramount for somebody who calls himself a preacher and for somebody who says, blessed, the blessed old book and the blessed old faith and the blessed old blood, better get it right. Because I'll stand before God and answer for the way I preach things. And God's like, you didn't preach. That wasn't the truth of that. You didn't search, search that out. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not, ashamed, and not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So for me to go, well, I'm going to take this verse and, and use it as a salve to make everybody feel better, I'm, I'm no better than the, than the guy downtown saying God's trans. You say, Brother Jay, what? Yes, 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 that stuff's happening. But it's, it is incumbent upon me to preach the word the way it is uh, uh, supposed to be preached. Now, uh, we, we want to just, Romans 8, 28, Romans 8, 28, Romans 8, 28. The Bible says, and we know all things work together for good to them that love God and to them 
and to those who are called according to his purpose. Um, so so uh, as, as um, uh, you think of people in your head, I've got people in my mind right now, as do you. People who, who um, uh, commit suicide. People who, uh, uh, whatever, drug overdose. or uh, we, I, I can think of lady, a girl right now that rode on our bus every week of the world. She was a little off. But bless God, she was a soul, and she had hung around the bad associations and the wrong places and the wrong times, and she ended up with a dead, burnt, charred body in a trash can right before Christmas, and they didn't find her until July. Romans 8.28. No, no, not Romans 8.28. It wasn't God's intention for you to do that. The Bible clearly teaches that bad associations create bad things in your life. Bad people, bad places, bad times, bad associations. Oh, it, it got into Romans 8, 28. No, not Romans 8, 28. Not Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 28 works for them that love God and who are the, in, uh, called according to his purpose. So, well, Romans 8, 28. Committed suicide. Folks, I get, I get tired of hearing, blaming everything on the will of God. Blame it on God. Blame it on God. Blame it on God. When we walk and we live in the will of God, Romans 8, 28 is going to bring out the best for you and bring out the best in you. And that includes sunshine and rain. That includes uh, mountaintops and valleys. When our hearts and our lives are hid away in the purpose of God himself and when the will of God is our divine object in life, and that's our object in life. You put it down, folks, there's going to be good working out for you. Uh, I said it in my Sunday school class, and I'm four or five minutes, and I'm done. I said it in my Sunday school class. When I took big steps of, okay, God, I'm following you, and I took big steps, then big step, big things started happening. We prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed for certain things to happen. Did not happen. I said, God, when these things happen, then I'll do this. Nope, it didn't work that way. We did this, and then the big things started happening crazy it's crazy when you say God I want to serve my life I want my life to count for you I want my life to count for you I'm going to do whatever it takes Lord I don't know what that means but I'm willing to say it I'm willing to believe it I'm willing to try it I don't even know what to do right away but I'm, I'm I want to commit my life to you you watch and see how things start to go up and down good and bad sunshine and rain valleys and mountaintops it'll happen It'll happen, and then, Romans 8, 28, all things start working together for good. All things start working together for good in your life. Now, I, I, I know that we, we use this sort of thing all the time to kind of blame on, on the will of God, but I promise you, folks, if you become obedient to the word of God, not just in word or in hearing, but in deed also. Hey, look at that field. We'd get some fruit if we put some seed in it. Okay, that's looking and acknowledging. But the, the fruit comes from tilling the ground and putting the seed in the ground and then the fruit coming. There's got to become work with it. The talk of the lips tendeth only to penury, but in all labor there is profit. On all labor there is profit. So when you walk and live in the will of God, Romans 8, 28 is going to bring out good things in your life. And Paul got word that the people of the church over at um, uh, 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 Ephesus, they had their faith shaken, the Bible says. Uh, they had their faith shaken in the Lord because they had so many um, persecutions against him and they were basically shaken for Paul's sake. And Paul writes these guys, he's like, what's going on with you? He said, I'm just fine. He said in Ephesians chapter 3, uh, verse 13 through 19, he's like, look, y'all, I got it together. I'm just fine. I'm going to do what's right. Y'all do what's right. And he wound up, uh, uh, he wound up uh, chapter 3 of Ephesians, and he said, uh, he said this, another one of my favorite verses. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. You can't be living with the devil and expect that the Holy Spirit of God's power is going to dwell in you. Well, I said shacking up with Satan and asking God to pay the bills. Not happening. Paul knew what he was talking about. He's not illiterate concerning spiritual things. He's got it together. And I need to, I, man, I need to wind this up. So you got to ask yourself, when Paul came to the close of, uh, of his journey and he said, folks, you, 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 you better get ready. You better get ready. They said to him, you better get ready. Here comes the chopping block. It's just days ahead. Paul said, I'm ready now. Let's do it now. Let's, let's do it. And I love how one preacher said it. He said the fellows came in with, an, with that old axe. 
Paul voluntarily laid his head on the block and looked at his brother Luke and winked his eye and said, I'll see you on the other side. I'll see you on the other side. I'm going home. It's been a wonderful trip. I've enjoyed every step of the journey. And I just want to say Romans 8, 28 has been a wonderful experience all the way. And we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, who shall separate us from the love of Christ, neither death, nor life, nor powers, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So if Romans 8, 28, folks, ever worked, if it ever worked, it'll work today, it'll work right now, it'll work this hour, it'll work this moment, and it'll work in your life. It will bless your life, it will strengthen you with the strength that you need in the closing end time. Folks, we're living now. This generation is closer now to the coming of Jesus Christ than at any other time. Now's the time, folks, to say, I don't know how much time i got left, but I'm going to live it out for Jesus. Amen. How do I do that? Amen. Every situation in your life, this has got something to say about it. If you do it according to this book, you're doing it for Jesus Christ. And if you do it for Jesus Christ, you can claim Romans 8, 28. So don't just throw every little thing that's happened in your life and say, Romans 8, 28, Romans 8, 28. Not if you haven't been loving God. Not if you're not living in his purpose. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? It's a wonderful thing, folks, to live in the will of God. Man, to live in the will of God, there's no greater blessing. There's nothing better, no better place you can be than to be in the will of God. Miss Jackson, could you find Miss Sarah? I need her to... No better place to be. Got some folks coming to be baptized this morning. As they get ready, I want you to go into a, a place in your mind with the Lord. I want you to search out your heart this morning. I want you to look into